welcome to another episode of the Beer Ladies Podcast. I am Lisa and I am your host this week and I am joined by Katie. Hi. And we are audio only this week because we are having a special play away episode. Ooh. We are at Dead Center for their Oktoberfest. We're going to chat a little bit. Uh, we're going to chat a little bit about Oktoberfest in Athlone. What's that about? But we're going to let them first do some quick introductions. So, Dead Center folks, how are you? Hello, I'm Petra. <laughs> hello, Petra. Uh, and hello, I'm Liam. Hello, Liam. How are you? It is so glad. We are so glad to be here. I was last here for ooh, this is a craft beer community meetup uh, event, which was good fun. And Katie, you were here not too. Long I was here ago. last summer, I think, or. Something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, last summer. So before we dive into all of those things, and again, we're going to say Oktoberfest. Why Athlone? How, how does that all come together? But we will just want to say our usual spiel. So thank you for continuing to like and share and subscribe. We are at Beer Ladies Pod in most places on the socials. We are at Beer Ladies Podcast and a couple of the other ones. We're on the YouTubes. You know where to find us. We have a link tree now. So thank you for your continued support. But with that said, this time, everyone's drinking the same thing, so we are really excited about this one. One of us is drinking it way faster than everybody else. <laughs> I'm, I'm so saving, sorry. I'm just slowly saving it, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. Well, I think it's important, it's important to say, again, we're recording before the Oktoberfest kicks off, so we're not trying to go overboard. So, Liam, do you want to talk us through yeah. this gorgeous Rattler? This is our 2.2% lemon Rattler. Um, we make it every single year. We make an American wheat ale called Across the Pond. Mm. Uh, so it's 50% American wheat ale and then 50% a lemonade that we make in house. So the lemonade is very basic. It's just water, sugar, lemon juice, and citric acid. Um, but when you blend them together, it's it's basically hard lemonade. It's, <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's it is super easy to drink. So easy to drink. Yeah. Like yeah. far too easy, especially <laughs> on a sunny day. This is yeah. This is. I need this. It's been a long day on the yeah. build-up to today, so this is brilliant. Like, this, drinking this on the deck outside in summer, like, oh, you could yeah. have so many of these, you wouldn't yeah. even know. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and great, great point. So for those who have not been here, there's this glorious deck. We're here on the river. It's, Shannon. Yeah, on the yeah. river. Shannon. Shannon. Yes, and it's, it's just beautiful. And we are really lucky. The sun's out today. It's It's not... We don't have the autumnal chill yet, although it is October. Yeah. It's not yesterday. Yesterday was a and the terrible day. This oh, morning yeah. was... When I came in first, I was like, oh, it's chilly enough. I don't know what way it's going to go. But we're out there now putting mm-hmm. up some of the hoarding, and it's great. It's really nice. So hopefully the queue doesn't get rained on, and we'll see how we go. Oh, um, as myself and Lisa were walking up, we saw uh, a guy erecting crowd control. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, don't know if you call it, call it crowd control. <laughs> um, no, we've been really good. I have to say, everyone that we're dealing with for... Beer has been really good with POS this year. Mm. I think it's because maybe there was a couple of years where there was no Oktoberfests, and I don't know, maybe they had spare POS. But um, no, Hofbrau have been good, and Weinstefaner have been good, so it means that we have lots of, of things that we can use, lots of free free stuff, which, you, being a craft beer bar, you don't get those Guinness and Ireland's well, Edge and Madry and all that kind of tat thrown at you. Uh, so it's nice to get some really good. So the place is fairly well kitted out. It looks deadly. Like I was, I came in yesterday to, uh, to work and I was like, oh my God. It was actually making me so excited for today. Mm. <laughs> Even when I'm working and not drinking, but it's still exciting. Yeah, it looks great. There's lots of blue and white. We'll definitely put some pictures up on our socials. It's it's gorgeous. But I guess, so are, are we basically in Munich on the Shannon here? How has it uh, come to be? Yeah, the, this is a great place. Yeah, yeah practically. Yeah. Yeah. As good as you can get anyway, particularly <laughs> outside of a city. Yeah. You know, well, like, as you said, why Athlone? Um, well, we're in Athlone, so yes. we wouldn't do it anywhere else. But um, no, we've, we've only managed to pull off one before, mm-hmm. which was the 2019, which was our opening year. Um, and it was, it was good crack. Yeah, it was it was actually incredible. Like, uh, like I've never really worked before with, like, such a big crowd. And you could see them queuing outside, oh. all the later hoses and everything. It was just so great, like, yeah. you know, and, and just... It's going to be the same this year, so it's. it's and I did. I tried on my journal, <laughs> and it still fits <laughs> amazingly. I don't know how. Uh, with those COVID stones, I'm not going to say pounds. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's your brother. So um, I'll be I'll be in my journal later on. Yeah, You'll well, we we tr- I, we were hoping that uh, we'd get some uh, 
some good fancy dress. The first year again, we got yeah. people that just took it upon themselves because nice. we should probably do like best dressed prize or something. We just haven't this year. We did the first year, mm -hmm. um, and it was yeah, it was good crack. It was good crack. Yeah. So tell us about Dead Center Brewing and when when was it founded? What well, made you decide to set up a brewery in the banks of the Shannon? Oh. This, this spiel, people yeah, don't sit and hear me tell us. <laughs> but just but, uh, in case someone out there hasn't heard it. Yeah, well, I I worked in radio for years, so media and marketing is my background. And I moved from a job in Waterford, where I worked on air, to a job here in Athlone, where I was in management. Um, but I had spent some time travelling in Australia and New Zealand, and found the kind of beers that when you came back... You just, it was the same five taps in every yeah. pub. And I, oddly, I wasn't a beer person before I travelled. But when I found beers that I, I was like, oh, there's flavour to this. This is, like, I, I really don't care who you are. The, the first time you drink a macro lager, you don't go, this is it, this is my drink. Right. It's not, no. it's not pleasing on your first taste. You do it to kind of fit in with uh, the people absolutely. around you. And, and to... even people that say, oh, well, you know, you have to, you have to build a taste first. But like, why? If you don't, <laughs> if you try something you don't like it, don't drink it or don't eat it. Whereas I found beers in Australia, and particularly in New Zealand, that I liked as soon as I tried. So that kind of transformed me a little bit. But then obviously came back, couldn't get any of those beers. And at this stage, I had wound up in Athlone. So I had started home brewing. So Roger, who was our home brewer here, was a member of the Midlands Beer Club. Sean Coulihan, who started Wide Street, was a member of the Midlands Beer Club. It was a fairly good club, you know, particularly for me coming in as a and new because initially I, I hadn't been brewing I'd been fermenting I'd been making cider but I hadn't been brewing so I moved quickly from you know fermenting apple juice to making kits and then all grain and then started to kind of get a little bit better at it and really wanted to know more about the business so at that stage I started working for Roy River Brewing Company at Selbridge and uh, learned an awful lot about the business of beer and um, yeah but I was still living in Athlone and traveling up and down oh, to Selbridge yeah um, yeah, so I put together the plan for Dead Centre. We started brewing initially under contract with St. Mel's. We did some cans, put them out. I knew from Roy River, like being able to make a beer and being able to make a living making beer are two very different things. Yeah. Um, so I said, look, let's put some beers out and see how they go. And they were relatively well received. Um, so I said, look, we'll, we'll push on and, and go ahead with this. So planning permission came through here kind of mid-2018. And then we opened the doors February 2019. So it was well, it was quick. Um, yeah, but that's that's how we got here. The brewery itself didn't actually operate until the right at the very end of 2019 because just red tape around yeah. revenue and things like that and production. So yeah, we got a couple of months production before COVID <laughs> came and spoiled our parade. Yeah, and that's, that's us. Petra's been here. Petra met us before the place was open yeah, to interview. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I remember because I always loved beer and I always like loved craft beer, but I wasn't really like kind of like, oh, like I knew it's there, you know, so yeah. if I see it on tab, I will have it. But uh, it was actually, it was sitting um, across, the, uh, across the river yeah. in a um, pub and I could see this like dead center brewery. And I was like, oh my God, there's a brewery in Athlone. <laughs> so straight away, um, like I, I was actually searching like, like if, if there's any like a job to go or anything like that and then applied and that's the start of my journey in that center yeah, basically. And you're doing many things here aren't you? You're sort of Jill of all trades. Doing yeah, the book, the yeah, book. like I started actually in the bar and um, then kind of floor, then you know, Bit of everything. Uh, everything. Bit of brewing. Petrol bomb. Oh yeah, I was actually <laughs> this is the one thing I was like, I need to mention this. Liam actually hates when I mention it. Pe bomb. I don't know. The beer was great. The oh, expense was phenomenal. The amount oh. of hops in that beer. I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about it. Okay, yeah. This is so exciting for me. Like, <laughs> so um this is basically uh we always agreed at the start that there is going to be like um the staff is going to have their own beer. And uh, I love my bitter hoppy beers. Mm. So then Roger was like, yeah, let's do it. And uh, I actually didn't come up with the name of Petra Bomb. But I think I, 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 it just it was always there. I don't know where, yeah. I, we all, I don't know where it originated from, but we knew when you made a beer, we were going to call it Petra Bomb. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, just, so. it just happened somehow. And uh, anyway, this day came and me and Roger were here for a couple of hours, like, well, 
whole day kind of doing it. It was great. And I picked my hops and, you know, we were doing it on the, like the pilot kit and then just kind of born the Petra Bowl. And it was <laughs> one of the best beers. I was it like, was, I, well, I was, after, it was really good. Yeah. But Roger had a nightmare cleaning out the filter with hops. <laughs> well, I, I had a nightmare looking at the bill for the hops. The but the beer was, was very good. It was a bomb. It was a, it was a hot bomb. Petra is like, you have to pay for quality like but that. But that's it. Yeah. Quality <laughs> doesn't come cheap. That is yeah. a fact. And you get out what you put in. And yeah, it, yeah. the beer was very, very yeah. good. I Very actually well drank a uh, lot of it, I think. <laughs> we actually tapped it up after the first um, lockdown. And, um, was, it, was it that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, after the first lockdown was tapped up. I remember I was just so proud of it. And I even, because I do a bit of like photography and just try to do a bit of like graphic design, not really the best, <laughs> but I did like even the, the logo That's for right, it. Yeah, 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 the, the top badge for Petra so Design herself. That was my little uh, bitter baby, I used to call it. So. <laughs> Yeah, oh, brilliant! Cool. Yeah. I I never got a chance to taste it, but so, yeah, I would love to if you ever decide to. There's a V two. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was actually yeah. thinking. I think Ro me and Roger are kind of looking at each other like, hmm. But then there's Liam, like absolutely not. No, <laughs> look, 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 we'll see. When Liam goes away on holiday, <laughs> yeah, order yeah. a load of hops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we just gotten to yeah. the point that I'm frugal. <laughs> I'm cheap, I think, is the other but way to say like, it. like, you know, if, if there will be, you know, a gap for like a beer or something, you know, for summer, like... Petra's like, Pet 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 like, hey, I'm willing. I, you know, like, I, I wouldn't mind, you know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Petra, you let us know when it's brewed and we'll come down and we'll buy it. Perfect, 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You've, got, you've got a clientele already built in yeah, there, you know. Perfect. Yeah. Now, we had we had crew on a couple of weeks ago and they have, you know, such a tiny, tiny, tiny kit. You guys, it's, it's not much bigger it's, necessarily. We had but. said... Like up until a crew, we were the yeah. smallest operational brewery in the country by square foot. Um, and then John and the guys came up here one day. <laughs> they came in and I was like, look, it's, it's small, but it's perfectly formed. I always say that. This brewery does exactly what we need it to do. Now it is tiny, but it does what we need it to do. Uh, and he was, John was like, I, would, I wouldn't know what to do with all this space. I'd be lost in it. And I was like, what? And when I went down to crew, I was like, oh my God. It's, it's oh my yeah. f fair play to him. He gets so much out of oh my goodness, an yeah. insanely small space. It's it's very impressive. Yeah, yeah. Well, like yeah. like when we were chatting with you, but then you have to really think about what's going to be in the tanks. How quickly can you know you've exactly. got to be making those same considerations? And we're kind of the same way. Like yeah. we only have four tanks. Yeah. So if we get a, a, a week where every tank is empty, so just take for example, if every tank was empty, we brewed four times that week, then you've got two two weeks of twiddling your thumbs right. and planning the net you know but there's no brewing because the tanks are full and you're at capacity so it's strange the pilot kit like what petra used for petra bomb that's brilliant for kind of let's so let's try something see how it goes and we we haven't had a miss on the pilot kit yet mm -hmm. which is weird because we've done some batshit crazy things <laughs> in there. yeah actually yeah there was what was uh the oh, really good so far anyway do you remember the pizza beer oh yeah oh, yeah, yeah. That, that we had was, a, uh, a pizza beer called neapolis it was a smoked Mexican cerveza with <laughs> cherries, pink peppercorns, tomatoes in the mash. Not cherries, cherry tomatoes in the mash. Oh my goodness. Pink peppercorns and basil. I would say that Roger did not like cleaning out the filters after that. It's, Roger, <laughs> it, it's mad because it was Roger's idea. And I was like, mm, okay, Roger is very good for, I've said this a hundred times, I would happily brew IPA after IPA after IPA and it's terrible particularly on a day like Oktoberfest when we have an array of cracking lagers and some great hefts but I'm a hophead and I, I would happily just brew IPA after IPA whereas Roger is really good at no let's try let's do this let's do different things so like uh, IPAs are, they are still they're what moves over the mm. bar they are yeah. but we've done like in the pilot kit last was the Rattler and the chocolate and cherry stout right eat, right. Drink, eat drink and be cherry um before that i can't remember what the last thing we had in the pot i know that we did the um we did resist our fundraiser Ukrainian for the ukrainian beer. Beer. Yeah, yeah that was um sunflower seed it was a uh, wheat beer sunflower yeah, seeds yeah. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. we did sorry there's the chiller kicking in oh, oh, we good. did kechita which was a, a tequila and lime goza oh wow we did We've done we you know that's that the pilot kit is great for that and even that the the yeast that we used on the goza is philly sour so it's actually a, a yeast that that creates 
lactic acid creates sourness. Uh, so we are doing a commercial batch of a sour for the first time because we're really happy with the way the yeast goes. So one of the next beers to go in is a passion fruit sour. Oh, we're doing that. So Fair the pilot kit is great for trialing things out, seeing what's good enough to, to ramp up. And then obviously we have, well, hopefully soon, we'll have the 2000 litre brewery coming online in Bloyery. And we'll actually start to treat the pub kit like a pilot kit. So we'll try out weird and wonderful things on the pub kit, put them on tap. If they're well received, we can scale them up in Bloyery and then put them out for distribution. But so isn't, it, isn't it great that you can put it on tap, get your feedback instantaneously, it's brilliant. practically? It's brilliant. There are, there's two ways of looking at the, the feedback, though. I don't know if you find... There are some people who will say really nice things to you because you're standing right there right. and they don't want to be like it's a swing and a miss <laughs> and there are other people who it's like they don't realize you have feelings and they'll be painfully oh, honest <laughs> you know so it, i find it swings one way yeah. or the other i don't know what you think yeah like uh b basically th this is even like uh when you band about lots of new beers and because like uh at loan it's like like there is brewery here you know you get the beers but before you, you you couldn't really find in pubs and then they come in and like you know the you ask them what they like you give them a bit of this and then you see the reaction you know the, the way you were saying like they they're straight to the point they'll tell you what they think or they're like oh yeah yeah you know it's, it's grand you know yeah. but uh, the worst ones i find are oh that is lovely yeah, yeah. that's really nice no I, but i won't have it uh, yeah. you know what I mean that's just say it's not for you like yeah. taste is subjective right. it's not going to suit everybody um, but uh, most people are really good for oh no I wouldn't I wouldn't mm -hmm. try the, oh, okay oh actually yeah no that's that's great actually I'll take a point of that yeah, yeah. you know I think people are look it's a it's still a relatively small town yeah. wouldn't exactly be a metropolis um, but people are far more willing to experiment here than I was expecting them to be yeah. which is great and as I, I've said before and I know it sounds like a somebody on LinkedIn throwing out a lot of rubbish, but like I always say, we don't have customers, we have a community. Like the people that come here once, twice a week, every week, mm -hmm. are just staunch supporters of what we do, which is brilliant. And hopefully it'll, it'll keep kind of snowballing. Yeah, it's a kind of a difference, you know, uh, here than like in any other pub, because like you can, you can talk about the beer, you can explain about the beer when it was made, that it was made literally like where we are sitting now, like you just point down, like here it was made there, and they love that. So like even if like new customers are coming in, you know, you talk to them about the beers, you know, you tell them this, 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 and they love it. And it's kind of like then they're coming again, and you know, they have the beers again, and then they'll just become like regulars, you know, they start loving, then they follow us, you know, they, they, they see the beers that we are making, they are actually excited what's coming next yeah. then you know yeah. and the, I, I actually love to see that yeah it's, it's cool yeah absolutely even in like six I, I i know it was on when i was here before you've got the hansel and pretzel nitro pretzel stout like that's a weird one but it works right like, yeah you know, it's, you just... and, and that was a result of last year's Oktoberfest. oh yes where right at the last minute they said oh look you can you can now only have I can't remember what the actual rule was. Was it social distancing was in the game? Was it, was, it was, a, was it a limit on the number of people? It was a limit people? on the number of people. Maybe, yeah. maybe that was it. I think as well you couldn't do bar service. It was only table oh, service. Oh, it was yeah. table service again. Yeah. That's, whatever the combination of rules that they brought out were, it meant we weren't going to be able to have 250 people in here right. drinking pints outlandishly. So, and rather than say, okay, well, we're going to refund half the people. You're like, that's totally unfair. Right. Like how you so, pick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And now I know other people go, well, it's still bloody unfair to say you're all getting a refund, but we just refunded everybody and said, look, when we can do it properly, we'll do it. Um, but that left us with 250 pretzels. <laughs> been, so what you do with it? Been, yeah, <laughs> you put them in a beer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it came out really good, actually. The, the, um, and the, this one is back up. We've done three batches now three batches I think after year one yeah. after year two and for this one yeah, yeah. and then um, it's it's been a bit of a yo-yo of a beer because it was it started off as a 6.5 percent nitro stout okay. the next time we brewed it the efficiency was just way off and there was far more in the after the first year we used the leftover pretzels right. in the second year we used all the pretzels and okay. the fermentability was a bit lower so it was only a four and a half percent stout mm. but we dialed it in this year and said look we, we need it to be up there because when it's a full six and a half percent there's chocolate in there from Quebec and handmade chocolates it's a lactose as well so it's a little bit sweeter a little bit thicker 
and then really the pretzels don't I think a lot of people go well it doesn't really taste like pretzels and go, yeah but the pretzels just ferment it out right, right. you know so it's not really it doesn't really impact there's a lit, a slight touch of salt but it's just because this, and we did try and scrape the salt off as best we could but you leave some and then you get some salt in the, in the finished product but it's not it's not a salty beer it's not right. a goza or anything no it's, it's like a, it's like a little hint of it but then because I remember trying it first time like I love stouts as well yeah. so I was like here I'll have this yeah. <laughs> and then I was like it was just very little bit so it's basically like okay this is the pretzel you know yeah. so that gives you that that a hint so but also Roger this year so we used to, to get the chocolate in we use um, cacao nibs so the nibs from the chocolate making process because Michael in Kilbegan handmade chocolate does it bean to bar so he, right. he has the cocoa nibs um, so we basically dry hop the beer on the nibs and then pull them when we think it's done but Roger tasted it and said I think it needs more time and when he tasted it again he's like it's gone too far <laughs> but it totally hasn't like that beer I don't think it's ever tasted better I keep using the word and it's, I know it's getting old but the beer is decadent this year it's so chocolatey I think it's, I think it's brilliant brilliant yeah and that's what I'm saying Roger comes up with these ideas for, yeah well why don't we try this and like a chocolate petrol chocolate pet pretzel nitro milk stout yeah I just would you know I wouldn't have had the balls <laughs> to make <laughs> that beer but it's great it's really good yeah, yeah. And do you think some of the sort of you know experimental stuff that you can put on tap here may, if it's a success, find its way into some of the canning, the can yeah, stuff? Definitely. Or, yeah, definitely. The, the, I'd love to do the Rattler commercially. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that'll be a gorgeous summer yeah, beer. I think yeah, I'd love to do it commercially. Um, it's fine for, we literally kegged this yesterday evening. Roger mm -hmm. was here until about six or half past six, mm -hmm. and he kegged it just before he left. So it'll pour today. But you see, technically there, you're introducing lemonade right. which is a lot of sugar into something that potentially still has yeast so keg grand when it's being tapped the next day and could be drunk sure. likely in a day you don't have to worry about re-fermentation but in cans i would definitely worry about re-fermentation yeah so I, I we i can look at uh, contract pasteurization but i'd almost want to do some and taste it and make sure because yeah. at the minute i don't want to change the profile of it tastes as I said, it's like drinking lemonade. You would have no idea. It tastes yeah. divine. Yeah, mm -hmm. all really, our, really Nearly good. all our glasses are empty. Because yeah. it well, she's on the job, so... She <laughs> well, I, I, have to, I have to be here in the evening, so yeah, I kind of yeah, clear yeah. head. But A glass of 2.2% Rattler. It is delicious. It's so good, and I'd love to do it, but again, you just have to be careful. You could you could put you in something like potassium sorbate. Potassium mm. sorbate's a yeast inhibitor. It won't stop re-fermentation, but it'll definitely slow it down. Um, but I don't really want to put potassium sorbate yeah. on my ingredients list. You know, it's it's nasty. Um, so I would actually lean more into pasteurization if it doesn't affect the flavor of what we're doing. Right. If it does, yeah. So it's potentially happening. something to look forward to. But yeah, like you yeah. said, you'd have to experiment and see yeah. how it Yeah, oh, and definitely. I think the sour, I really hot, I'd really like to get the sour into cans. Um, our black IPA started on the pilot kit. We're going to rebrew that again this oh, winter. Oh, I'm excited about uh, that. Yay. Yeah, yeah, stealth mode. And then, yeah, what else have we got coming up? Shamax we brewed this time every year. Yeah, so that's yes, the amber. Just, yeah, yeah, that's just yeah. becoming a, and people are starting to shout for it now already. So, I mean, like, I'm so excited. I like, know, yeah. <laughs> Shimmy, Shimmy Shammy. Shimmy Shammy, it's, yeah. It's affectionately known as, and we got come up with some cool nicknames for beers here. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so that's coming up. Um, oh, there's loads. We have Turquoise Waters in Tank, which was a tropical IPA we did last year. And we have Boswell's in Tank, which is just our standard dry Irish stout on nitro we're just going to make that constantly it's a uh, it's it's an easy drink and stout works well and behind us in the tap room i've been looking at um your list up there and i'm looking at the dunkelbach yeah St steady as the stars was a uh, steady as the stars interestingly enough was a name that i when I, I was doing some freelance work for another brewery before i started dead center and they asked me to do some artwork for them some mm. graphics i do all the graphics for the beers uh, and I put together something, and just as a placeholder, I took a lyric from a song. It was a black beer as well, so I said, we'll call it Steady as the Stars mm -hmm. for now. And they were like, oh, it's such an awful name. I was like, oh, <laughs> I actually really like the name. I just, but it, it is only placeholder, so there's no offense taken. Right. And then I added it to my, if, if I open my phone, <laughs> I have a, a great big list of... Potential beer names? Yeah, some of them are just, there's all my beer names for upcoming beers. Well, I'm not going to say them in case somebody else thinks <laughs> yeah, yeah, you takes don't want to them. It's still yeah. there. It's just, got some good, I like a punny beer name now. I don't do many puns. Oh. So what we do generally is if the beer is going on draft here, mm. that's fine. Like Hansel and Pretzel, 
like eat drink and be cherry mm-hmm. but outside of that I tend to uh, all I do is I hear a, fr- a series of two or three word phrases and I go oh I like that and it goes down in the notes um, yeah that's where it comes from people love the names like every time you have yeah. people coming to the bar they're just looking at the names like who came up with these you know like it's, yeah. it's just it's just but it's gold, mad like. some of them are like that where yeah. I just hear something in passing and I scribble it down and other things have names for a re- like marooned mm. uh, maroon and white are our county colours in Westmeath so I thought that was perfect uh, teeny tiny uh, and yeah. anything that's below average size in here we yeah. call it teeny tiny <laughs> um, and when we were doing the coffee training we, we learned how to make a ca- I'm not a barista <laughs> so I learned how to make a cappuccino and then they were trying to teach me how to make a, a flat white and a latte and I was like listen if you ask for a cappuccino I'll make you a cappuccino if you ask me here for a latte you're getting a cappuccino and a latte glass and if you ask me for a flat white you're getting a teeny tiny cappuccino <laughs> and teeny tiny just stuck then it was like yeah. oh, anything that was below average was teeny tiny and so. teeny tiny is such a delicious IPA for the ABV teeny yeah. tiny it's amazing. Is, is an odd one um, it doesn't sell the way it should. Really? And oh, it's for me, for me, it's so it's the star of the core range. Like you, uh, yeah, like it's yeah. it's it's three point three, but like if you have it and like there's no way like you could tell like yeah. you yeah. would think it's you, like five or something. You could drink you know? ten of them. Yeah. 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 You shouldn't. <laughs> Sorry, just responsible. Oh, I like I the challenge. But, you know? yeah. <laughs> 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 but but you could. Um, yeah. yeah for, whereas for us here. Uh, Dead Pixels is the best selling beer that we have here mm. on tap. It's a Pilsner Lager. In the, in the off trade, so in cans, it's the worst selling beer that we have. Oh, so it's, it swings around yeah. a bit. We have to brew it yeah. more than any other beer, but a majority of, of the volume goes into keg. Uh, then Seeking Sunshine would be our best selling can and our second best selling tapped beer. Mm. Then Marooned is third across the board, and Teeny Tiny would push up the bottom on. Uh, on on draft sales I think anyway I'd have to look at the numbers I haven't yeah. broken them down but it, like it is popular like once people have it they will have more but yeah. it's just because yeah. I think they get put off because of the lower ABV yeah but then because they might they might think that oh it's not going to be like a beer you know but then you have it and it's just like oh my god this is actually delicious <laughs> yeah. I love I love teeny tiny yeah. like especially for let's just say you're drinking on a Monday night and you've worked the next day. Yeah. It's the it, perfect it, thing. You don't want yeah. something that's going to, you yeah. know, wreck you. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. And even we tend to, not well, it's not that we focus on low ABV, but we tend to try and keep most things sessionable. For yeah. something like, you know, a special beer, 100%. You sure. know, we'll always do something big for Christmas. As I said, like the Hansen and Pretzel at six and a half or a stout, the new Cherry Stout 7.3. You know, they're bigger beers, they're fuller beers. But like, when you think... Our, of our core range the highest ABV we have is 5.5 mm-hmm. everything yeah, in there yeah. is sessionable you know um, and Seeking Sunshine at 5 is just right for mm-hmm. it's a great kind of a gateway beer for people and um, it's not overly hoppy there's a lovely hop character but it's subtle you know uh, so people tend to buy into that but yeah I think you're right I think a lot of people see 3.3 on Teeny Tiny and go ah What's the point? I don't know. I think there is a bit of a movement because Rascals oh, have brought out there. Yeah, there had yeah. absolutely there, it's, ABB beer it was as well. Strange. We've seen so many swings. Blacks of Kinsale made a triple IPA called 2020 Vision <laughs> in 2020. And we got it at the bar. We put cans at the bar. Yeah, I had a can of it. So <laughs> when people were limited to an hour 45, oh. they were out, they were like, I have an hour and 45. Yeah, what have you got? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they were drinking triple IPAs and they were drinking Belgian quads and Le Chouf, we had Le Chouf on tap for a stretch there and 8% pale ale, no problem, yeah. all day long. Um, but I think, it, I think it'll come back around. Now there's no time limit. I think people are going to start to, because low and no had been flying up. Like yeah. There was a huge growth in the no and low sector. So I think it'll, I, th- I think it'll come back around, hopefully anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, if you go into the wilds of beer Reddit, which, you know, is, is okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you can regret yeah, it too. It's all like, <laughs> you know, if it's under... Eight percent. Why do I want it? You're like, oh. yeah. <clears throat> Maybe you don't really like beer. Yeah. But there is, there is, uh, even in craft, there is still a cohort of well, drink oh, yeah. to get drunk. <clears throat> you know, if I like, if I didn't want to feel it, why would I consume alcohol? Yeah. You're like, yeah, I, I understand the foundation of your logic, <laughs> but I think somewhere in there there's a flaw. Like we, yeah. I, I couldn't tell you the last time I was drunk. Perhaps you probably can. I don't know. <laughs> no. Oh, <my> God. <laughs> no. Well, anyway. <laughs> Doing that all the time. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really myself. Actually, I think 
the last time I uh, well, not, sorry, actually, I, they're not allowed to be at this now. Myself and Liam Hanlon from St. Mel's a few months ago at this stage went for a couple of drinks one night, and that didn't end well. <laughs> that wasn't here, no. I we came here at the oh, end, okay, yeah, 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 and I lost my anyway, <laughs> we're we lost my phone, and, yeah. But I generally I will have a can almost every day, but that'll be it. I'll have yeah, one can yeah. while I, and it's always with my dinner, yeah. or or after my, you know, that kind of in the evening one can and that's it. And, you know, I'm drinking for the flavor of the beer, yeah, the quality exactly. of the beer. Whereas there are definitely some people that are still. That's why we need. We never have security here. Yeah. Never we do tonight right because you, know. you never know exactly yeah and well it's a lot of people as well and your know. crowd control Ex- absolutely yeah well the crowd control yeah. is, yeah. is <laughs> sponsored by Vine Stefan uh, <laughs> literally to the point where like should we have loads of it keep going <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, very good we should probably start wrapping up because you guys have more setting up to do and I, we don't want to like take you away from all that it looks amazing but before we do any any things to look out for events coming up or, or again beers uh, that maybe people can get that are scattered far and wide yeah no there's not too much to be honest we have we've started to do a couple of music gigs here before lockdown so our first one is back at the end of this month but it's sold out paddy casey is here on the 28th oh, wow. yeah we have a, a comedy gig next week where there are still tickets for that so i don't know this will probably be i don't know if this will air in time for people to, <laughs> to grab them or not but uh that's next week and then beer wise um as i said we have quite a few new beers coming but i think the one i'm looking forward to is uh, last year we made a beer called Here Right Now, and it was a very it was we called it a hyper local Imperial Stout, and um, so it was uh, we brewed the beer. We had Quebec and organic oats, Bell Lane coffee in Mullingar, Quebec and handmade chocolate, and then we put the beer into Lockery distillery barrels, so the, the whitish barrels, and um, and then they took the barrels back after we took the beer out, and they did a, a whiskey finished in the stout casks. So we have that behind the bar as well. And then because they put whiskey into it, they've re-sterilized it. So we took the cast back and we're gonna do another here right now this year. Uh, slight remix, we're gonna drop the coffee and replace it with cherries. So it'll be, or not cherries, I keep saying cherries there. It's that bloody stout with chilies. So it'll be a chocolate, oh, chocolate chili imperial like stout. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So look, it's something different again. We've never done it. Um, the oats that are going in are from Quebec and Organic. The barrels are from Lanesborough, which is the far end of the lake. Uh, and then Roger, the head brewer here, grows his own chilies. So Ooh. literally it's, it's pretty <coughs> local. Speak to him about that, can get. Yeah, mm. he is a keen gardener. I don't know where he finds the time to do absolutely <laughs> anything. It's yeah, insane. Yeah, he's a busy man. Like. Very busy man. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then I always try out this information. But Roger has a, 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 once every two years, he has a birthday party at his house. And the last time that we went out to his house for this birthday party, he had 27 taps of homebrew on. Wow. 27 taps. We only have 11 taps of <laughs> Yeah. Like, crazy. So along his, his day job is brewing here. No, for no. No? Roger's day job, Roger's full-time job is a lead aeronautical engineer with Ryanair. Roger <laughs> fixes planes for a living. Okay. I yeah. wasn't expecting so, that. Yeah. So Roger works four days on, four days off at Ryanair. Yeah. So he works two of every seven days here. Because, as I said, when the tanks are full, yeah, the tanks yeah. are full and it's a tiny brewery. So, Roger's here two days a week, uh, in Ryanair four days a week, and grows chilies, home brews, makes cheese, Jeez, smokes oh. meat. It's, uh, I don't understand. And, uh, and has, <laughs> has, yeah, it shows the best parties. Has three kids, uh, one of whom is in Australia, so he's two kids to look after. A wife, a house to maintain. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I just. Yeah. He's he's a Superman. I am oh. heading to Rogers when the zombie apocalypse hits. Oh, I'm telling you. That's we'll a good be sorted. <laughs> yeah, lots of beer. Yeah. yeah. Also, zombie apocalypse is a good name for a beer. I'm sure it's been had before. Oh, there must be. Because yeah, I'm sure if you yeah. go in. Oh, I'll add it to you. That's what I. On top. Yeah. That's why I. We had a, a double IPA last year, or the year before last, even called Ultraviolet Tilt. And the only reason it was called ultraviolet tilt was there was already a beer called ultraviolet. Like, just stick a <laughs> word in the end of it. Tilt. Yeah, tilt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I tend to do that quite a bit. <laughs> How can we it. change this to make it unique? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Oh, well, we, we'll, like I said, we'll, we'll begin to wrap up, but I will say for any of you who are like, but you haven't talked about the history. What about, oh, you know, where Oktoberfest comes from? We did that already. That was in like season one. So go back, 
It's in our archives. You will find it. We do talk for your history on that one. But you, you, we've done some history ones lately. So they're in there. They're in there. We're not letting you down on that, on that side. But again, thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing, at Beer Ladies Pod on most of the things, at Beer Ladies Podcast on some of the other things. Find our link tree. Buy some merch. But by the time this comes out, you'll have seen us posting on our socials how much fun this Oktoberfest is going to be. So we are really, really excited about that. But... With that said, we just have to thank Liam and thank Patrick because you guys have been amazing. Thank you for taking time out on such a busy day. No worries. I'm happy to take the time out. (laughs) (laughs) And with that said, Katie and I are going to go start getting dolled up so we can be ready for the Oktoberfest in in just a little while. We'll have to be top of the queue. (laughs) Yeah, you're you're nice and early, so you'll get early, you know, all the beers. Well, I have to go back and put on my dirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. So with that said, we'll sign off and we'll see you all next week. Bye. 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 Bye.